All right, so today we have a Toro 4500D with an actual problem. That is the machine right there. Now, I already started working on this machine and then I realized, you know what? This is one that I should be doing a tutorial on because I could not find a video on this uh, rebuild of the gearbox. So I wanted to do one, so I got the gearbox off already. Look here, as you can see, I already have it off, but let's just come around to this side to see exactly what's going on here. We'll take a look at this one, because this one seems to be okay. Now this is your bevel gearbox here, which right here, the other one has a, had a, a crack in it. Um, all the fluid leaked out. The bearings broke inside of here, and uh, this is the whole unit here. It's a bevel gear case that we had to take off. Now, up inside of here, this piece had to come off as well. This is another gear case, which holds a bigger gear. The bearings in this had went bad. So, we got a little bit of a job ahead of us. All right, here's the gear case that came out. All right, now when you take this apart, there's going to be all, you know, gear oil in here, obviously, and you're going to see that crown gear in there. All right, now on the bottom of that crown gear, this one's already fallen out here, there is a bearing which is supposed to go in there. And you can see all the bearings here that fell out of this thing. And then it caused it to crack. There's our crack. All right. So all the fluid came out. This thing ran dry. And basically, the wheel was locking up on the Toro and just dragging across the turf because the bearings had got inside of that gear down there and seized it up. So it was causing the wheel to lock up. Now, that gear in there is what spins this. That's the other part I was telling you about. That'll go in there. The reason I took this off is I was originally just going to rebuild this. But then I had realized once I got this one off that this was jammed up and wasn't spinning. So... I had to take this one off. This, I did not remove anything yet because I'm focusing on rebuilding this one first. But down here, you can see that's the bearing there. But inside of it was these. They're all out. So this whole gear has to come off and a new bearing has to go in there. Right now, we're going to focus on this one. So I have a new bevel gear case. Got this from Toro. And I got a new gear. Basically, to take this one apart, the bearing, you're going to have to pull out of here. Your shaft should then slide right up out of there and then you can pull if I can get it out of there there you go you can pull that crown gear right out of there now if you look at these side by side you can see how tore up this is from the bearing so I got a new one this may still work but while it's apart and it was only like a hundred bucks just better off replacing it Especially when you're playing with these gears because while it's apart, just do it because if you don't do it right, you're going to end up breaking something else and it can get costly. So we will put all that aside and we have to put this back together, which is pretty straightforward. I will show you over here. So if you look at this drawing, you can see. There's our bevel gear case. That's the pinion I showed you. There's a bearing. 
and this o-ring just goes over this bottom plate right here find it which is this plate here that you're going to see on the bottom it has an o-ring around it that's all that that is all right so we're just going to get some grease and just in this new one here we're just going to spread it around inside that that'll help with the race going in this race actually fits in pretty nice it's not going to be too hard of a problem but just always like to put the grease in there anyway these things get a lot of a lot of wear and tear and they heat up quick a lot of pressure on them. it's a heavy machine and these gears and bearings are really small so put a little bit on there and then we will Take our bearing and we're just going to pack this in with some grease, smudge it up, you never have enough grease. It's when you don't have enough grease that you get your friction and those bearings start falling apart. So don't be shy with the grease, really pack it in there. Pretty much drop your race in there. This one fits kind of nice. Have to get a rubber mallet. Go. All right. Got our race in there. So you want to get your bearing in there. There's your race. You can go through the inside and just kind of drop this in. Make sure it follows the taper. You can just slide that in there. Let it drop. Let it drop right in there. Alright. Next, we're going to take our gear. Now, see how this thing is shaped? It's a little bevel. It's bevel gear. Inside here, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of shaped like a bevel there where this will slide in okay drop it right in there like that now you're gonna take your shaft that's gonna go down through here and just kind of turn it until it drops down in there until it lines up with the groove okay. oh there it goes and our bearing just fell out all right we got our bearing back in the bottom there. We got our gear in. Now when you spin the shaft, you can see it working. That's all there is to that. Now, we got this plate on the bottom here. This is your plate that has a little O-ring around it. Just kind of set it on there, and then you may need to tap it in just a hair. All right, and then we can put our four bolts back in there. Don't cross thread them. It should go in pretty fairly easy by hand. If they don't, you can always put a little bit of grease around them. Help them get in there a little bit. All right. Now we have our bottom on, and that's really it to rebuilding this piece. It's fairly simple. This, these two bolts here, are the ones that go through here, all right? Now this shaft here is going to go up through there, and there's going to be another gear in here another big sideways gear that will actually this shaft will turn the gear in here and then that will turn another gear up here the main gear which is in the rear so basically this is out of alignment right now because we took it all apart but when you put this back up in there you're just going to slide that shaft in there can't do this with one hand, but 
you're gonna slide that shaft right up in there like that if you can see it now the other gear is going to go on here go in here and that's got the bolts on it where your wheel would slide on if that makes any sense I know it's hard camera angle but I don't have the other piece rebuilt yet but if you're just replacing the gearbox and the wheel on your Toro is locked up I would start by taking the two bolts out of there and this whole assembly will drop down and the first place to start looking would be in there and check that gear and that bearing and uh, while you have it off spin that other gear this one over here just to make sure now this is the gear I was telling you about where your wheel goes on but spin that to make sure that that is spinning freely and that's not locked up too because if it is you're gonna have to take this off and redo the bearing in here as well which is the problem that I have now so I got to take this apart I got the unit up here in the vise this whole gear has to come off in this bearing because the bearings down there is shot so you're gonna need a puller to get this off and you can go on Amazon I think that's where they got this one and get a puller like this all right and you want one that's at least a uh, you know two inch and three inch puller and this one should be just enough for that hopefully it's not too short all right so we'll take the bigger one out of here just gonna take the bolts off of the one side so that we can slide that out like that we're gonna take this side slide it right under there like that and then take this side, kind of like that. You want to slide that onto those bolts there. This is a pain with one hand. I've really got to buy a tripod or something. Um, let's get these bolts to, there we go. All right, so now you got that clamped on there. Put these bolts on here. And you want to leave them a little loose first, and I'll tell you why. Just leave them just like that. All right, leave them loose. Now what you want to do, because this one looks like it's going to be a tight fit here, take the skinniest one of them all, of this, and screw it in there like that. All right. Go to your other side, grab the other skinny one. Now see, that's hitting the gear. It's on a little bit of an angle. So we want to, that's why we left those nuts loose. So we had a little bit of play in this. So move this around still. There we go. See, that's just touching the gear. This pulley system just made it. Almost had to buy a bigger one. All right. Now you got them two in. Come over here. I'm going to grab this piece. Slide it on one side, turn it, and ah, this nut is too tight. Let's loosen that up. All right, and then just slide it on. Oh, we gotta loosen this nut. All right, and then just slide it onto that side like that. And you can tighten those down also. Okay, now it should look like that, and the center of your shaft you should be able to see right there, which is where this long piece is going to go, and see the point there, it's going to go right in the center of that shaft. So I'm going to screw this in the center, sure that that is center there you go all right now would be a good time to just 
snug these up. Notice I'm doing all these basically hand tight. Just snug them up. All right. This ain't a bad little pulley system for, I think we paid like 60 bucks on Amazon. All right. And you are going to need a vise or something to hold the base of your thing because this is going to pull up. And if you don't have nothing holding this, this whole thing's just going to pull with it. So you need to secure the base somehow. All right, because what you're going to do now is you can get a wrench or get a socket put on there and we're going to tighten it. And as we crank that, you guessed it, this is going to pull up on that and it should pull this gear and this bearing off. See, we can do this with one hand. I don't know how tight this is gonna be here. I'll put the camera down here as I'm turning. Oh, I feel it coming up. There it goes. That was actually really simple. One-handed too. I'll be damned. All right, I think we uh might have that off. So we got this bearing loose. Looks like this gear just slides off of there. And I don't know what this is. Definitely looks broken. I guess that's some type of shim. That goes there. And now we're down to This this is a spacer here. We'll figure out how to get that out of there next. But it looks like we do have some type of locking C clip here. We're gonna have to pull that out. And uh, that should be able to allow us to get that bang that bearing out of there. Clip pliers here, we just squeeze them together and I'll take that clip out of there. But this spacer here. You're going to want to try to get a little pry bar underneath of it, and you're going to push up on it. There you go. Pop that spacer right off of there. Should come off now. There we go. Alright, and now we're down to the bearing, which the reason I took this apart, you can see that's pretty shot. It's all broken. Oh yeah. They're just kind of bouncing around in there. Looks like we have a little tiny clip right here. So that's going to have to come out next. Which is a groove in the shaft here that these actually set into. And it's pretty simple to get out. You're just going to get a, uh, a flathead screwdriver, stick it right in here on each side. This clip is split, and that's the way that they come. So what you'll do is you're going to put a screwdriver right in there, and we're going to hit this with a hammer, and it should push this side out of that clip, and then we're going to do the same thing to this side. It should push that side out with that clip. This is what those little clips look like. Look something like that. Now when you got this in the vise, this bottom here is going to want to spin on you. So, you want to be real careful you don't mess these threads up. Because this is what holds the wheel on. So, a little tip what you can do is... Take a rag, put a rag around the bolt, and then you can take your vice grips and clamp your vice grips there so you're not actually damaging the teeth on that 
and your vice grips will wedge against this vice and then you can tap on those clips to get them out to keep this bottom from spinning but wrap those threads in a cloth before you put a vice grip or something on them you don't want to be vicing down on these either to hold them in place because these threads again they hold your wheel on so you want to make sure that you're not galling them up all right if you look close now we got that clip out you can see that groove there so when you're putting the shaft back in you want to make sure that this is at least sticking up far enough and your bearings down far enough so you have that groove for that clip to go back in all right so this puller that i used to take off this this actually doesn't extend wide enough to pull this off so I have this other one this other puller that I had gotten from Napa this is one of their bigger size ones um, I don't particularly like this puller I keep it for jobs that don't require a lot of a lot of pressure to pull up because these things are made really really cheap no offense against Napa, I bought a lot of parts from them, but these pullers are not that great. Um, so I'm hoping this one's going to do the job and pull it up here. Um, but basically it's just two claws, one cranks under this side, one cranks under this side, and the same as the last puller. You got your middle bar here, which would set in the center of your shaft, and then you turn this with the socket. So I'm going to crank that, and hopefully that will... Uh, not break this puller and we'll pull it up. It's starting to come up. I think we got her. Oh, and just punched myself in the face there. Alright, I think we got it loose. Always be careful when you're lifting stuff up after you pull it because you don't know what parts are going to fall out the bottom. All the bearings falling out as expected. Those are, can fall out. You just want to make sure if you haven't done this before that there's not going to be any type of spring washers or locking clips or anything that is busted that are supposed to be there. O rings that might fall out. So when you put it back together, all those elements need to go back in or there for a reason. All right, but that's out. And you can see bearings are all falling out in my hand here, literally. You can see inside of that, but those bearings are all over the place in there. Alright, so down here, after we had pulled this one from this, there's an oil seal which I did not remove. Now you could use a small puller like the other ones we had and pull that up. Um, but this one actually looked to be in good shape. So I'm not going to mess with it. So last but not least, we got to get this race out of the middle here. This bearing race. Um, probably may bang out. We put this on a flat surface and hit it down. We may be able to tap that out of there. Let me see how easy that comes out without having to get a puller. Uh, you can see most of that race is out now from hitting it on the floor. Um, all we got to do now, and just be very careful, you don't want to ding up the walls inside of here. Just get yourself a punch. And now you have enough room to get in there on the back side of that race. And we're just going to hit the top with a hammer. Try to hit it level on each side. Tap this side. Tap that side so it don't get all jammed up. We got that race out of there and we're going to clean that up but uh, remember all the bearings were kind of bouncing around in here so we may have some dings on the sidewall which will make the newer bearing going back in a little difficult so it wouldn't be a bad idea to get yourself a little wire wheel attachment to a drill and uh, after we get this cleaned up basically you'll just run this around like that on the inside 
We'll just kind of hone those walls a little bit and get them nice and smooth so that that new bearing is not going to have any friction when it goes back in there. All right, it's cleaned up. I honed it a little bit in here, cleaned the walls up with the wire drill. And uh, we're ready to start putting this thing all back together now. I'm not going to film it going back together. If you watch the video, basically you're just going to go in reverse. Just uh, be careful putting everything back together. Don't gall anything up. If you got to bang anything, use a rubber mallet. And, you know, any place that bearings and things are going, doesn't hurt. Put a little grease on your fingers. And line the walls. Let everything go in there without having to beat it together. Because you, don't, you do not want to have to do this job again in a matter of minutes if you do it wrong. Alright, so once this is all back together, I will film the assembly of this whole unit going back on to the machine. That part I will film because I did not film the beginning part of taking it off. Alright, I know I said the video was done, but as I started putting this back together, I ran into a little issue myself. Not really an issue, it was just a little snug getting it back in and the video is supposed to help people and i don't want somebody to be all stressed out putting it back together but let me show you so putting this bearing back in it was a little tight going in so what i had to do was get yourself a rag lay it on top of the bearing and get your punch set it on there so you're not scoring the bearing up and hit that and then move your rag go to the other side place it on the bearing hit it and just keep working the rag around and working your punch around to seat that bearing all the way down. Now, if it's not all the way down, remember those two little C clips we took off here? The little U-shaped clips and that groove? They won't go in that groove if this isn't all the way seated, the bearing. So make sure that bearing's all the way seated. And these things actually, because I didn't have it all the way seated, it looked like it was. And I was trying to put these in and they wouldn't go in. So, once that bearing is seated, these actually popped right in. Alright, so make sure you use a punch and put a rag here and make sure that's all the way down until you see that groove exposed and try seeing if you could slide these in, or at least with a little tap they should go in. If not, your bearing is not seated. Hopefully this tutorial helps, so I will see you next time on what to do. Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe below. I try to upload videos daily on a lot of machines and engines and different types of things so you never know what you're gonna need to do and you just don't know what to do see you next time